Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about pneumonia. So let's get into it. So first of all, what is pneumonia? Pneumonia is the inflammation of the lungs and what happens is there is an excess amount of fluid and because of that excess fluid, gas exchange isn't able to happen as effectively as it should. So that excess of fluid decreases gas exchange within the lungs, which we know is very important for the lungs. So our lungs are not working at their full capacity when we have pneumonia. Lots of things can cause it. It can be caused by viruses, bacteria, and even fungi. And there are different types of pneumonia that your patient might have. So community acquired pneumonia is when they get pneumonia outside of the hospital setting. So in their home, at work, at school, that's where they got it. Healthcare associated pneumonia is when they get pneumonia following a stay in a healthcare facility. And this includes all healthcare facilities. So this can include clinics, rehabs, assisted living, any of that. Hospital acquired, as you can guess, is related to a hospital stay. So this is when they start showing symptoms of pneumonia within 48 hours or more of being admitted to a hospital. And ventilator associated is within 48 hours or more of being put on a ventilator. So who's at risk for pneumonia? Our big one, of course, smokers. So our cigarette smokers are high-risk patients for developing pneumonia. Those who have prolonged immobility, it's important to get our bodies up moving around that helps us breathe, that helps with gas exchange. And when we're immobile for long periods of time, everything just kind of sits down there in the base of our lungs. So that puts us at risk. Those who have a decreased level of conscious, um, so think about like our Coma patients are patients that are bed bound or confused. Those with advanced age. So your risk of acquiring pneumonia goes up as you get older. So a 90 year old is at higher risk than an 80 year old for catching pneumonia. And because of the normal physiological changes of aging that occur, like decreased um, lung capacity, um, and they're not as strong taking those breaths, they have a higher risk for pneumonia in advanced age. And then of course, respiratory disorders. If you already have something else going on like COPD, you are at higher risk for getting pneumonia. When it comes to the signs and symptoms, they're going to depend on the severity of the pneumonia. So mild versus more severe pneumonia. And typically they come on gradually. So it's not like all of a sudden the patient starts exhibiting these symptoms. So some of these symptoms include things like chest pain, tachypnea, so a high respiratory rate, orthopnea, so they have shortness of breath while lying supine, fever, chills, cough, and I wanted to first point out fever and cough, those are a little different depending on the cause. So if it's a viral cause, it's caused by a virus, then they're gonna have a low grade fever and a non-productive cough. If it is a bacterial cause, they're gonna have a high fever and a productive cough. So those are a little bit different depending on what the cause is. Other things the patient might report, headache, shortness of breath. Um, we can hear crackles upon auscultation of the lungs. And then overall weakness and fatigue, because this is a lot. Their body is trying to fight off this infection and it can make them feel weak and fatigued. When it comes to the labs, some labs you might do include sputum cultures. So if they do have a productive cough, then we can take that culture from there. If they have a non-productive cough, then we might need to suction to get that sample. So sputum cultures, We'll do a CBC, and upon the results, we will see that the white blood cells are elevated, indicating infection, inflammation. Do a chest x-ray of their lungs. We want to see what's going on. ABGs will be drawn, and likely they will result in hypoxemia. Will we see those in the results? A CMP, so those fluid and electrolyte balances, we want to know. 
And then blood cultures, usually these are done to rule out other causes, to make sure that yes, this is for sure pneumonia. The two big ones though that they will do standard are the sputum cultures and the chest x-ray. When it comes to nursing care for these patients, first we're gonna put them on droplet precautions. If they are smoking, because remember smoking was one of the big risk factors for catching pneumonia, we wanna educate them on smoking cessation and help them to stop. We're gonna put them in a high Fowler's position. So remember we said that one of the symptoms they could have is orthopnea. So that's you know having a hard time breathing while they're laying down. So having them sitting up is going to help facilitate breathing. Suction as needed. So sometimes there's a lot of sputum, sometimes they don't have a very productive cough. So some patients will need suctioning to help. Teaching the importance of regular coughing and deep breathing to help mobilize those secretions in the lungs. Teach them how to use the incentive spirometer properly to help with lung expansion. Promoting rest, because remember, just the act of breathing is a lot of work, okay? It's tiring on the body. So we wanna make sure that we're having them rest. We're gonna administer oxygen. The standard is three liters nasal cannula, but that might be different depending on your patient, how severe they have it, and what symptoms they're experiencing. So it could be more, it could be less, but kind of the standard in the middle is three liters nasal cannula. Some other things, repositioning, repositioning them in that bed frequently, getting them to move around. IV fluids to keep them hydrated, Thorough and frequent respiratory assessments, so assessments of the lungs, respiratory rate, pulse ox, all of that stuff we're going to be checking frequently. Monitoring their diet. Because they are using so much energy to breathe, they're going to be burning through calories a lot faster, so they might need to have an increase in their caloric intake. We also want them to increase the fluids that they drink. So IV fluids definitely, but also oral fluids because that's going to help thin those secretions in the lungs. And then when it comes to medications, these are potential medications your patient might be on depending on the cause of their pneumonia and the severity and the symptoms that they have. So if they have bacterial pneumonia, antibiotics are probably going to be prescribed. If they have viral pneumonia, they won't be. So these are just some things that your patient might have depending on what's going on with them. So antibiotics, analgesics for pain, antipyretics, especially if they have one of those high fevers, bronchodilators, and anti-inflammatories. That's gonna help them expand their airway and help them breathe. So these are potential medications you might give to your patient. And that was my video on pneumonia. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.